I'm Rebecca Eastwood from CTI, and today I'm joined by Jerry Oodelson, who is also the creator of International Coaching Week. It's thanks to Jerry that we're all gathering here today in what is ultimately the biggest community event in the coaching calendar, 26 years on from its inception. Thank you for joining us today, Jerry. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm really excited to be here. Can you tell us a bit of the background about how this all came about? You know, how, what inspired you to create International Coaching Week? That's a great question. This started as just a little tiny event that I wanted to hold in Boston, where I was living at the time, to promote the idea of coaching. So I had been familiar with other organizations, <laughs> excuse me, that had weeks dedicated to whatever they were up to. And I decided, well, I'm gonna create, it was National Personal and Business Coaching Week. So I went to the library, cause there really was not much of an internet. And I there was a huge book called Chase's Calendar of Events, which is an American publication bigger than a phone book. And people list like National Pickle Week and Father's Day and, um, you know, cheese manufacturers and clean off your desk day and all this stuff. So people make up holidays as a public relations PR vehicle for promoting whatever it is they want to promote. So I Xerox photocopied the pages, typed them up on my typewriter, and I think I faxed them in to um, Chase. And I created it in, in February because the book came out at the end of the year. And this was kind of the earliest time when we could do an event and have time to promote it. So it was originally in February and I had another person's name on it as well because she had email and I didn't, but I created it. And we the first year or two, we uh, did some events at Barnes and Noble bookstore and we would have different coaches have an hour each and they would do give a talk and do coaching demos or whatever. But very soon after the first year, the Canadian coaches contacted me and said, well, we want to be involved. So I changed the name to, I don't remember, if it, I think it's probably just International Coaching Week. It was either that or International Personal and Business Coaching Week. But the idea is it's an opportunity for coaches and their clients to think about the progress that they've made during through, through coaching. And also it's a way to just, tell other people of what coaching's about. So it really had no, no business motive for myself. It was just like, I want to do this to just promote coaching. There's last year, there were over 3000 events on the ICF platform in 33 languages. So it's gotten way beyond anything that I, I never envisioned this. I never like wanted to draw attention to myself by promoting coaching, I just really wanted people to to um, to to learn about coaching and to hire a coach. Well, you certainly achieved <laughs> a lot yeah. in that in that moment, and what you've achieved over the last twenty six years by virtue of your legacy here. Um, what what do you th think is the most, sort of most transformative moments you've witnessed in um, in coaching yourself that really would drive people to become a coach? Well, I think best thing about coaching is the long-term relationships that I, de I develop with clients. I mean, I, I'm a real estate and business coach, and I work with a lot of people in professional industries like legal services, graphic designers, accountants, and I work with a lot of realtors. And by having a long-term relationship, I feel like I help them grow their businesses or take, take make a shift if they want to do something else. And their successes are gratifying to me. I take like I take no credit for my clients' successes, as I'm sure you don't either. It's just the coaching process is designed to facilitate transformation. Over 26 years ago, you know, coaching was probably more in the domain of sports. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how have you seen it change? Well, it's changed in good ways and bad ways. It's changed in good ways in that. Um, their spiritual coaches and their their life coaches and their their specialty coaches in different um, different areas of business and different areas of life, which I think is great. But I think that coaching was really at the beginning executive coaching and sports coaching, and now everybody says they're a coach. and And I'm I'm taking a class now with someone who's a trainer who's tr training me in 
technical information who calls herself a coach. And I think there's, you know, potty training co coaches, cooking coaches, doggy walking coaches, et cetera. And I really wish there were different terminology for what we do because professional coaches who are trained and who understand the competencies and know the difference between therapy and coaching and understand the power of questions and silences and um, not having an agenda. That's to me, a lot of the essence of coaching. And when people are in different fields, like they're so-called real estate coaches, which I'm familiar with, and they're teaching people how to use scripts with their clients or how to negotiate whatever, or certain principles, it's it's great that they do them, but they're either sales trainers or they're just train in providing information educators. So I think that's what's changed is that there's a certain cachet with the term coach. And so it really doesn't mean what what we think it means. And, and so it, I think it gives people a false impression of what a coach is when they find somebody through the back of a newspaper, or, you know, people who are, or who have great mailing lists and do things, but they're really not what I call, and what you, like what CTI would call coaching. You know, if you could go and have a word with your former self at 26 years ago when you were starting uh, this whole um, coaching week, what would you, what would you have said to yourself? I think it's important to follow your instincts. And I think I would have said, you know, it's going to turn out fine as I, when I was starting out and just, just try it. And I really have to say that I followed, I did, I did the right things. Like I got trained as soon as I found, found out about coach, I found out about coaching because I had a client with ADD attention deficit. Now it's ADHD and sure her, her, um, Psychiatrist was John Rady, who wrote Driven to Distraction, which people on the call may or may not know. It was one of the first books about ADD. And I read the galleys, and there was something called coach, like hire a coach. And I was like, oh, I, I can do that. So then immediately I learned about ADD coaching. And then I, from that, I learned about professional coaching. And I started to go going to ICF meetings. And I met Cheryl Richardson, who's a well-known coach. And then I got trained as soon as I could. So I think for me, I've always followed my instincts about which way to shift my business or what, what course to take or who to meet or whatever. And I just say that because, you know, I've been meditating and I've been like open to receiving answers. You know, that sounds a little woo-woo, but I, I do try to follow my gut. Uh, my follow-up question is, you know, what would you say is the power of coaching? How would you sum it up? That's a powerful question. The power of coaching is in the is in the relationship established between the coach and the client. And the power of coaching is the ability of the coach to elicit knowledge and wisdom that are within the client. And to elicit that and to facilitate the client moving toward a new direction. Or, or deepening the practice they already have. But it, it's really working on a very intimate level with somebody with, with love and empathy and compassion to help the client get to where they want using the client's agenda. I am sort of detached from coaching week. I mean, I created it, but it sort of came through me. And if some, if I hadn't done it, someone else would have done it. Because it was, it, I, I was the right person at the right time. So I feel very gratified that pe you know people want to hear about the history of coaching, coaching week, and people want to do it. But the but the main thing I want to encourage people is to do something, do pro bono coaching with a nonprofit or the the head of an organization or a, or homeless shelter or um, a mother's group or whatever, or, or offer free laser coaching you know, hours or Zoom coaching on the phone or, you know, take a table at a, a coffee shop with a couple coaches and, and offer free sessions. It's just an opportunity for people to, to showcase coaching. And I think it's a great platform and it doesn't have to be that week. It could be another week in May or whenever, but I just really want to leave people with the thought, like, you know, just do something, something to promote coaching and to inspire other people. 
and I'm, you know, I love CTI. I thought it was one of the best trainings I've ever taken. And so, um, you know, I really encourage people to, to, to go out and, and coach. So thank you.